a warm welcome to all of you from India Bio Streams, the recently launched initiative of India Bioscience. As a part of this effort, we are proud to host today the Department of Biotechnology's webinar series, inaugurated by the Secretary of DBT under the DBT BioConnect program. Through this series, you will learn more about the Department of Biotechnology, which is India's main funding agency for biosciences and biotechnology. We will have Dr. Renu Swaroop, the Secretary of DBT, give an overview of the journey so far, followed by Minak, Dr. Minakshi Munshi, the advisor of DBT, who will share more details. For today's webinar, we have people that have signed up from all over the country and also a few other parts of the world, the US, Canada, Hong Kong, and Finland. I would like to also share that we are simulcasting this event via YouTube live stream. I'm going to share this link via the chat window. You will also be able to find this link on the home page of our website, India Bioscience, www.indiabioscience.org. You should find it in your chat window as well. So if any of you would have any issues with audio or video, you could also alternatively view this via the simulcast. And you could even submit your questions from the YouTube uh, channel. So before we get started, um, I would like to briefly go over some housekeeping instructions that will help you with your experience and help you also interact better with the speakers as we go along. So we will talk about adjusting voice over IP settings and uh, the, how to, the using the chat box, submitting Q and A. And um, so you will see if you're using the web app version of Zoom, your screen is going to look like what you're seeing on the screen share slide. If you have Zoom downloaded, the layout may look slightly different, but the features that I will demonstrate will be the same. At the bottom right of your screen, you will see um, the audio settings. You can use that to check, test your speaker and microphone levels. At the bottom central panel, you will find three icons. The leftmost is the chat window. Through this, uh, our team will be sharing some relevant resources during the course of the webinar. You as an audience will not be able to type into the chat box. However, if you have any questions during the webinar or will need any help from us, do type, your, uh, type it into the Q&A box, which is the rightmost icon. So the Q&A box opens where you can send your questions. You have the option of sending your questions anonymously if you wish to. In the middle of the panel, you have the raise hand icon. And if you, if you uh, press that, you will be able to raise your virtual hand, that is, if you wish to ask your questions verbally, although I do request uh, that we, we reserve these uh, questions till the, at the very end of the, uh, of the webinar, the last 10 minutes, the floor will be open to Q&A, where you will be um, uh, able to interact with the speakers. During the course of the webinar, if you have any questions, do feel free to use the Q&A box. Okay, so that's, for the, that's it uh, for the housekeeping instructions. We'll get started with the content of the webinar. We, are, we will now hear from Dr. Renu Swaroop, the Secretary of the Department of Biotechnology, the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India.
Welcome to this first edition of the DBT webinar series, which is being launched today. This is the DBT's new initiative under the DBT Connect program, where we are trying to connect with all our stakeholders, the students, the researchers, the faculty, various other groups in the national and international stakeholders who are working with, very closely with DBT and who have a large number of collaborations to be able to share with you what DBT's vision is, what DBT's mandate is, what our key programs are, what our key initiatives are and also how we would like to see this being then taken across the country with each one of you playing a very important role in contributing to the larger vision and mission of the biotech sector in this country. Being the first in the series today, you will hear from my colleagues and others on what DBT's journey has been across these many years. Set up in 1986 as an independent department, the biotechnology department was given the main mandate of promoting the biotech sector within the country. From research to innovation, science technology, human resource, capacity building, infrastructure, right up to taking this through the translation phase to connecting with startups, industries, entrepreneurs, the whole sector. Our focus has been over these years to see how we can make an impact, connect with all the various players in this, look at what are the enablers, what are the key drivers, how can we play an important role in creating enabling policies, taking a continuous feedback from our stakeholders to bring in newer initiatives and then see where we can position ourselves in the next couple of years. DBT, as I said, was set up in 1986 and you will hear more about this from my colleague, Dr. Minakshi Munshi. But just to let you know that initially our focus was how can we establish a very sound footing of biotechnology within the country. With that in mind, DBT looked at various institutes, universities, research laboratories and then supported a lot of extramural research within all these centers. Our primary focus was on building capacities, trying to reach out to small laboratories and see how we could enhance their research capacities to be, become part of our larger biotech uh, whole global community as we call it. In this endeavor, we then, as I said, gave a lot of support to extramural research grants. We also made a lot of uh, effort to build the human resource capacities through a large number of human resource initiatives, created infrastructure, and at that point of time, we then started looking at building our own autonomous institutes, which play a very critical role in taking this biotechnology agenda forward. Over these more than 33 years of existence, DBT today has 15 of its own international and uh, national um, autonomous institutes and one international institute, the ICG. In addition to this, I think each laboratory within the country which is doing anything in bioscience or biotechnology has at some point of time been supported by DBT for the research activities. A large number of scientists have been supported. We have been able to build capacities through our human resource initiatives and we do support a large number of students right from the university postdocs, the GRFs. We then have our Star College schemes in which we look at the undergraduates, the NSC programs across the country in various disciplines, in various areas related to biosciences and biotechnology. Having put this huge effort in creating capacities, which as I said, we have done over these years, it was then important to do deep dives into sectors and see how we could build our strengths. And that strength we have today in each of the areas which contributes to biotech, be it agriculture, be it healthcare, be it clean energy environment, be it any of the other industrial processes or, of course, our most important basic research, knowledge generation, new te 
technologies, disruptive technologies, each one of them gets a major focus from us. We have, as I said, made a special effort to see that we keep a very, very fine balance between the basic research and the translation research. We have put together a complete ecosystem which enables basic research to move through its application and through the translational phase to be able to take it for the end user, through the uh, research groups, through the user ministries, through the industry. Once we had been able to move from this discovery to innovation phase, it was then realized that we need to look at the whole biotech enterprise. And for that, it was important to make as a part of our whole a team that is taking biotechnology forward, the industry, the startups and the SMEs also an integral part of it. So there was a holistic view that we had to take. In 2007, we brought out our first strategy, where we clearly brought out our intent to enhance our public-private partnership, to set up an organization by that, to be able to connect with the industry and to nurture and foster a very, very vibrant startup innovation ecosystem in the country. If you see where we stand today, we think a lot has been achieved and you will hear more about it in the following presentations which come. In 2015, we brought out our second strategy which is there to 2020 and we outlined for ourselves a very clear vision. Where do we want to see India positioned in the next couple of years? We have set out a target for ourselves, $100 billion as the biotech sector for by 2025. Today, if you look at the figures, we'll say we have just about achieved less than 50% of that. But in the next five years, we are hopeful that with all the effort that is being put in, we will be able to reach that figure. This series that we have put together, is, as I said, to give you an understanding of what DBT does, what DBT's core programs are, what DBT's key initiatives are, how can we engage with more of what we are already doing with our scientific community to make you a part of this whole journey towards achieving that large vision that we have. Whether it's our capacity building initiatives, where we would like to see how we enhance our human resource initiatives to address critical gap areas where we need new skilled human resources. Whether it's our skill began new initiative that we've launched with the skilled company to see how we provide skill to our youth so that they can actually then contribute to the growth of the sector. Our new SEHED scheme, which is bringing all the infrastructure together, helps to make it accessible to not only large institutes and universities, but even to universities, research laboratories in small uh, remote uh, colleges in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Within the research group, as I said, again our focus is how do we bring in more researchers and scientists to submit competitively uh, good quality projects for our external research. In the following series, webinars, you will hear about how do you apply for the project, what is our process, how are they reviewed, what are the key parameters which are assessed by your projects and looked at by the peer review system. We hope we'll be able to reach out so that we can then, over the next uh, few years, build these excellent centers across the country and not just have small limited pockets of excellence. We are looking at now bringing in newer initiatives for our grant schemes. While we do have our competitive grants for a large number of programs through our various sectors, as I said, which details will be shared with you, we also have uh, schemes through which we award excellence through our various awards, be it the Innovative Young Biotechnology Award, the National Bioscience Career Development Award, or its special awards for our women scientists, or special awards for our distinguished scientists, our innovators through the Tata Innovation Fellowships. We are now considering launching a young investigator grant 
for our young postdocs. For our young postdocs below the age of 35, can we help them to really become the future leaders of our science? Can they take up these independent projects which begin their career? This is, of course, work in progress, but we hope you'll be able to do this very, very soon. We also have a major initiative to bring back a lot of scientists to the country. The Ramalinga Swami Fellowship is one of our key initiatives. The uh, India Alliance uh, partnership that we have with the Wellcome Trust has again given us very, very interesting results. We've seen the level of competence that has been created within the country. Excellent scientific research, not only in terms of publications, patents, technologies, but excellent team leaders who have come forward. We are now making an effort to see that we reach out to all universities to see how we can have these fellows positioned here and more importantly, these fellows interacting with you. We have more than 600 of these between the two, Ramalinga and uh, the Indian Alliance Fellowship. They are the core strength of competence that we would like to see taken forward. As I said, our autonomous institutes play a very important in leading the sole part of biotechnology research and conservation to contribute to the national missions of the country. We have very recently announced the Unati missions, the Atal Jain Sanghan, five missions that we have, again uh, contributing both to affordable healthcare and agriculture and nutrition, including, of course, the clean energy environment. DBT's part towards taking India towards being a biotech uh, nation recognized globally has, as I said, a major emphasis on the translation product delivery for which Pyraka public sector is closely working with us and is taking this agenda forward. With more than a thousand startups supported, with a large number of more than 40 incubators across the country, a pool of more than 1,000 mentors and other uh, network partners who help us to take this agenda forward. I think we can clearly say that our target of achieving 100 billion is possible, but we can also try and see where we would position India, not only in terms of um, being very well positioned for our research capacities, but our translation. We definitely have an agenda to position India as a biomanufacturing hub. We would want to see India globally competitive in its products, be it the biopharma sector or the agri sector or the clean energy sector. And all this is possible with the engagement and involvement of all our stakeholders, all our scientists, researchers within the country. To achieve this and to bring this at the level of global best, our major focus on international collaborations is key to the success. And India is seen as a preferred partner for biotech collaborations. Our collaborations are with a large number of countries, but more than 20 to 25 countries, we have active collaborations, both in terms of bilateral and multilateral collaboration. India today is seen as a co-development partner, not just in the technology we see. We have wonderful partnerships from basic research to translational research. And as I said now, the startup and the innovation ecosystem as well. We would want to see this moving forward. But again, it's impossible for us to proceed unless and until we have a complete engagement with our community. And our community is you. This series is launched just for this purpose, that we engage with you. We keep getting your continuous feedback as to how you would want to stay engaged with us. What do you see as the key drivers for India to achieve that position? We would love to hear your response. We are now currently working on our five-year vision. We are working on what India would want to position itself, not only in 2025, but even beyond that. Your feedback for that would be wonderful. And we would appreciate receiving that. So today we just stop here from my side. We'll continue with more presentations from my colleagues, but this is going to be an ongoing initiative. We'd love to hear from you. Stay connected with us, not only through the webinars, but through our website, through our social media, and your feedback 
is very important for us to move this whole agenda of achieving the 100 billion target for the banking sector. It's not a DDT agenda, it's a country's agenda. And you are part of this drive as we take it forward. So I hope you enjoy this and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Renu Swaroop, for giving us an overview of the spectrum of activities that DBT undertakes. I'm sure there's something in it for each one of you attendees. Before we talk elaborately on, 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 of, on some of these, uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi is here with us. We'll hear from the audience uh, using an audience poll. Uh, so you will, I'll be launching an audience poll any moment now. So all of you should see a poll launched on your screen through through this. Uh, please let us know a little bit about yourself, where you work, uh, what you do, and which sector you are a part of. We'll give about 30 to 40 seconds for this answers to come. We have, we have quite a few of you have responded. Um, uh, five more seconds and we will stop the poll. So we will end the poll right now and I'll share the results. So in today's audience, uh, all of you work in India, and that's great. Um, and across the spectrum, we have uh, people joining us. We have researchers from the academia. We have researchers uh, from the industry. Uh, we don't have educators. We have undergraduate students, masters, and PhD students. Some of you are postdocs. Uh, we have a science communicator and some of you that are not in this category, but uh, also we have across the sectors, we have uh, a lot of basic researchers, some translational researchers, uh, agriculture, healthcare, energy, environment sector, and industry, and a few others as well. Uh, thank you again, all, all of you for joining us. We will have uh, Dr. Minakshi Munshi um, uh, share uh, more about the DPT with us. Dr. Munshi. Good afternoon, everybody. Just now you heard uh, Dr. Renu Sarup, Secretary, Department of Biotechnology. She shared with you all her vision for the Department of Biotechnology. This is the first of a uh, seminar, uh, a webinar in this series. So we thought first we should uh, talk to you about the department's journey so far. doesn't move. So if we look at the Indian biotechnology scenario, India is among the top 12 destinations in the world and third in the Asia Pacific. We are the second largest number of United States US FDA approved manufacturing plants in the country. We are number one producer of recombinant hepatitis B vaccine. Indian biotech industry aim is to touch $100 billion by 2025. And 
it's very important to know that we have a large consumer base with increasing disposable income. If we look at the market size of the biotechnology sector, starting from 2005, we, it shows a gradual increase in the, uh, has grown gradually. And over these years, if you look at in 2017, there is a, has been a quantum jump of 11.6 billion uh, US dollars. So biotech industry revenues are generated, but big chunk comes from the pharma sector, followed by bioservices, by agriculture, by industry, and by informatics. Now, I thought I, I'll share the organizational structure of the Ministry of Science and Technology with you, although many of you may be aware about this. Basically, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Biotechnology, and Council of Scientific and Industrial Research are under the ambit of the Ministry of Science and Technology. The Department of Biotechnology focuses on the biotechnology related research and the focus of Department of Science and Technology is on all areas of basic research. It includes mathematical sciences, engineering sciences, physics, chemistry. Then we have Department of uh, Scientific and Industrial Research where CSIR is a part of uh, DSIR and their focus is on technology and industrial development. I thought it will be nice if I share with you the genesis of the Department of Biotechnology. Department of Biotechnology started as a board in 1982 based on the recommendations of the SAC. And subsequently in 1986, full-fledged Department of Biotechnology was established. And uh, we started with the initial budget of five to six crores and over these last 30 years, we have come a long way in this journey. And currently, the budget of this financial year is 2,850 crores. And we have also come a long way in the establishment of various institutions. We started in a phased manner. And today, we have 15 autonomous institutions, which DBT is supporting. We have international ICGB also with us. And what is the vision of this department? It is to attain new heights in biotechnology and shape biotechnology into premier precision tool for the future creation of wealth and ensure social justice, especially for the welfare of the poor. Our mandate is to promote large scale use of biotechnology, support competitive R&D. We have a responsibility for setting up of autonomous institutions to identify and set up centers of excellence for research and development. We have uh, to set up major program is on human resource development, capacity develop building across areas, support international collaborations, establishment of infrastructure facilities to support R&D, evolve biosafety guidelines, serve as nodal department, for the collection and dissemination of information related to biotechnology. And what are the various programs and schemes supported by DSDBT? These include primarily research and development, capacity building, international cooperation, translational and industrial development research programs, established research facilities, resources, and technology platforms. We have supported many mission programs so we have special programs for societal development and promote biotechnology in northeastern region. So when we talk about research and development, we support research across the spectra on various uh, verticals, be it agriculture and allied areas, energy and environment and bioresource based applications, knowledge generation and discovery research. And we have a major focus on medical biotechnology when we talk about areas which we support under agriculture, these include agriculture and plant sciences, animal and livestock, aquaculture. Under energy, environment, and bioresource based applications, the focus is on energy and waste to value, environment, secondary agriculture, food processing, medicinal plants, phytopharma machines, bioresources. Under knowledge generation, the focus is on basic and fundamental research big data uh, genomics, disruptive innovation research, genome technologies. 
And under medical biotechnology area, the focus is on new generation uh, drugs, vaccine uh, research, medical diagnostics, stem cell biology, human genetics, maternal and child health, infectious and non-infectious diseases, neurological diseases, public health and nutrition. So I thought it was important that I share with you the competitive R&D grant process, how uh, you can submit a proposal through the Department of Biotechnology. We have an online system that's called ePromise, where uh, you have to first log in, you will be getting a password and a login ID. And after that, you can submit a proposal online and all the steps it tells you as you move along in, in the in this process. Once you submit an, a proposal, then you will get a pass, uh, password and you can track uh, the status of your proposal, where your proposal is, has it gone to the committee for uh, review. So what the process is, I'll share with you, the process, proposal is submitted, it goes to the internal screening committee. And after the internal screening committee, the, process, the proposal is sent for peer review and after the peer review, there is, uh, it is being looked after by the technical evaluation committee where uh, it does a due diligence. And the, if the project is recommended further by the technical evaluation committee, it goes to the next level committee that's called STAG or scientific and technical appraisal group, which looks at the proposal. If the proposal is below 25 lakhs, it doesn't, uh, the PI doesn't need to come for presentation. While if it's more than 25 lakhs, we request the PI to come and make the presentation before the expert committee. And based on the recommendations of the committee, the proposal is recommended for further consideration. And if the, if the proposal uh, cost is more than five crores, it goes further to the apex committee and the PI is expected to make a presentation before the apex committee and subsequently uh, the pro pro project proposal is recommended uh, for uh, support. And once the committee recommends, there are uh, certain processes to be uh, followed. And after that, a, a sanction order is issued and money is released. One of the major emphasis of the Department of Biotechnology is on capacity building. So we have a large number of programs at different levels. We have a major program on teaching and training where we have a program supporting at Star College scheme is as secretary also told you about this. We have a focus on this. We have short term training courses also where you can apply skill Vigyan program has been recently launched by the Department of Biotechnology. We have many national and international fellowships for PhDs and postdoc students and uh, research uh, fellows. We have, these are included like uh, DBT, uh, Newton Baba Fellowship, Kurana Summer Training Program. We have Hiddelberg PhD program in big data analytics. We have a joint PhD program, which is between IIT Mumbai and Monash University, Indo-Australia PhD uh, Fellowship Program. And we do have programs for the people who are overseas and would like to come back to the country and start their own research laboratories. These are the two major programs. We have Ramalinga Swami Reentry Fellowship Program and Welcome Trust DBT India Alliance Program. We do support uh, researchers who are doing good science in the form of awards and rewards. The uh, DBT has identified various uh, awards. They are known as Bright Award, DBT Bright Awards for recognizing the innovation and impact of research done by various scientists at different layers, uh, be it early career or mid career or senior scientists. These awards will, in subsequent presentations, we'll be talking about each program in a detail. So, but in this presentation, we thought we'd just give you a flavor of what are the existing schemes with us. And in subsequent uh, webinar series, we'll be talking in detail about each program separately so that you, uh, you can understand uh, what all is happening in the department. And we have a major science outreach program for the students and Nobel Prize series. We have this year, it will be in September uh, in uh, Chandigarh. And we do organize this four score workshops. We have an audience poll. Yes, uh, 
to all audiences, uh, we want to we want to learn from you if you have availed of some of these uh, schemes and funding opportunities and programs of TPT. So I'll be sharing a poll to uh, to un to get this information from you. So the the poll should launch on your screens any moment now. Uh, so please let us know if you have uh, participated in any of the DPT's programs that Dr. Munshi spoke so far. We'll give about 30 seconds for the responses to collect. We have a good amount of responses coming in. We'll give it about 10 more seconds. Okay, we will end the poll right now. Uh, Maybe three more seconds. If you haven't submitted it, go ahead and submit it. So let's end the poll right now. I'll quickly share the results and walk you through. So the programs for students looks like 14% of you are a part of the Star College scheme. Um, and a lot of you, 32% of you, are interested in participating in the future. Uh, and for the programs for the PhDs and postdocs, um, some of you have applied for the DBT, RA, and DBT uh, Research Associateship and DRF fellowships. And 14% uh, of you want to apply for this in the future. 14% uh, of you haven't applied for any of these yet. Uh, a large part of the audience, uh, probably it's not applicable to you. Uh, and for the investigator fellowships, looks like 14% of you have applied for the Ram, or applied for or received the Ramalinga Swami Fellowship. And a good percent of you, a quarter of you want to apply for this in the future. And some of you haven't applied for this. Uh, although uh, you haven't participated in the outreach programs before, looks like a majority of you, 64%, uh, show an active interest in participating in these programs in the future. So we will continue with the presentation with uh, Dr. Minakshi. As uh, you heard earlier, uh, we have been supporting projects across the country and then we realized we have given a lot of uh, equipment and instruments have been uh, supported under these pro uh, projects and programs. So we try to put all these uh, instruments and equipments under one portal, which is Scientific Infrastructure Access for Harnessing Academia University Research Joint Collaboration, which is called SAHAJ. So these all the big facilities which have been created and supported by the department across the country can be used by all of the scientific uh, fraternity. So we do support uh, programs from, from basic research to the translational research. And I thought uh, I would like to share some of the data with you on Startup India, we have supported 1,000 plus startups and entrepreneurs under, and SMEs under our Section uh, 8 company, which is Biorac. And nine biotech parks have been supported, 35 bio incubators. We have first international incubator on mission innovation, which is an involvement with other countries. And four bio clusters have been in existence. And uh, funding opportunities are there for, for capital investment to, to the startups which is done under uh, BIREC. 
So I thought I could share some successful stories also with you. We have supported many programs uh, since inception. So healthcare for all, we have a major program on vaccine action program of the department has been there since inception of the department. We have come a long way. And, and uh, many uh, first indigenous low cost vaccine has been developed. And uh, we have uh, uh, developed this regional prospect observation and research on tub for tuberculosis. Uh, aim is to establish an Indo Indian biorepository for future TB research. Low cost diagnostics have been developed and under our bioengineering and um, uh, program, we have many devices and implants have been developed. When we talk about SOHOM, for example, SOHOM is a device which has been developed under this program. This helps you to detect the cochlear implant disorder in a neonatals up to the age of six uh, months. And it's a very simple device and a very easy to use device. Say, similar way, we have these uh, castings made if there is a fracture of a, and then you can use these molds. Then uh, NeoBreath is one of another uh, Implant, uh, this device which has been made. So similarly, we have many devices which have been made under this program. So when we talk about healthcare for all, with the Department of Biotechnology along with the world, uh, WHO has developed a major program on industry academia mission to accelerate biopharmaceutical R&D development in India. We have a major program on India SAPI mission. It is a global mission where the main aim of the mission is to strengthen the development of vaccines for diseases of, of academic potential in India and build coordinated preparedness in Indian and public health systems. Garbni is another major initiative of the department where the focus is on understanding the fundamental knowledge on preterm birth for efficient solutions. We have also started a major mission program on antimicrobial resistance. And when we talk about uh, programs based on agriculture, which can improve the farmer livelihood, we have also uh, initiated a major program on understanding the brucellosis disease and create a brucellosis free village and cattle genomics is one of the major programs where the aim is for improved breed uh, production. And we have also been supporting uh, various uh, projects to come up with a diagnosis for, uh, diagnostics for cattle. The focus is on early pregnancy diagnosis in cattle and buffalo for enhanced milk production, for stress detection in buffaloes. And we have also come up with some of the detection kits for leptospirosis, which is a uh, zoonotic, which is a disease of cattle. And national repository also has been established for fish cell lines. We also have a major program on Kisan biotech scheme. Basically, we want to, that all the farmers, farming community of the country should uh, reap the benefits of the biotech, various biotech technological interventions that we are reaching to these farming communities through biotech Kisan scheme. India also has sub, been a part of international programs on in agriculture, especially in rice genome. We were a part of the rice genome sequencing, uh, tomato genome sequencing. And recently we also were a part of the wheat genome sequencing where, which was a consortium of 15 uh, partner countries. We have, uh, have got some successes. We have developed wheat varieties, uh, basmati, soya bean. Samba Masuri is uh, one of the very important rice variety, which has a problem, is infected by bacterial blight. We have come up with a variety which is resistant to this. And chickpea uh, uh, varieties have been developed which with high yield and protein. Uh, recently, a uh, Department of Biotechnology has uh, established a plant genomic and geno genomic and genotyping facility at uh, NIPGL, which is one of the DBT institutions. We have a major program on uh, clean energy, Swachh Bharat towards clean and green, uh, green India, where we support programs on centers of excellence in bioenergy, biomass for converting agriculture waste to ethanol. And we have a collaboration with the government of Netherlands uh, to, uh, to clean the Barakula drain in Delhi. And uh, recently, the, uh, there, even the governor visited that and uh, 
it is going on very uh, well as per the objectives and we also have a program on bio toilet technologies india is a partner to the mission innovation program uh, along with the 23 partner countries where the focus is on clean energy we do have uh, different regulations and guidelines in place as we are working on uh, on various research areas so it is important that we should have guidelines in place be it guidelines on biosafety for recombinant dna research and biocontainment facilities which was has been there from uh, 2017 we have national guidelines for stem cell research guidelines have been evolved for evaluation of probiotics in food and national dna technology bill which has recently come uh, to be presented before the parliament it is also there and uh, when we talk about the international collaborations we have collaborations various countries be it uh, bilateral or multilateral collaborations we have different uh, collaborations with various countries and as i said earlier we have a number large number of autonomous institutions and psus uh, which are being supported by the department of biotechnology and each institute has a different mandate to carry out their research and i thought i should share some of the successes uh, we have got for the past 5 years as we talk about the research ecosystem be it how many agencies we have supported how many projects we have uh, given from the department how many scientists we have supported and fellowships supported be it research associate srf grf or students supported under uh, training programs or finishing schools and how many publications have come up from the projects which we have supported by the department patents applied patents granted a large number, number of technologies have been developed and commercialized under the programs which have been supported by the department time to time and i thought i will end here with one thing that dbt has various schemes which can help indian scientists to do research and make significant contributions to the science towards the development of the nation we you can access all the details and by visiting our dbt website it's here and we have an audience poll uh all right everyone we will have another audience poll to understand a little bit of uh, um one second let me just launch that poll on about the dbt programs and and how to how you would like to engage with dbt you will see this poll launch on your screen any moment now uh please take uh viewers on youtube uh you will not be able to see these polls live uh it's 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 for the zoom participants will be able to see it so for i have also posted a google form link that you can use to give us your answers as well we'll take 30 seconds to answer this polls poll we're seeing a good amount of responses uh, please keep it coming we'll give about 15 seconds more okay so we will stop this poll in a couple of seconds and i'll share and walk you through the results so thank you for responding we have uh, a lot of you were aware of the 37% of you are aware aware of the dbt international collaborations uh, 40 40 41% of you about were new about the autonomous institutes very few about the sahaj uh 
Healthcare for all is also a quarter of you about, a quarter of you know about it. Few of you know about the farmer's programs. Um, a quarter of you know about the Swachh Bharat. And 30% uh, of you know about the Start Startup India. And an overwhelming majority of you have responded, 81% of you, that you have gained a better understanding of these programs via this webinar. And uh, it's great to see a lot of you 93% of you would like to participate in the upcoming webinar series and learn more about the DBT and would like to follow um, DBT on its social media channels and also learn more about it from its website. So with that, uh, I'm ready to take any questions i will be more than happy to answer your all your queries if you have. So if uh, some of you would like to answer your questions verbally, uh, let me change the settings here. You, you may raise your hands and I'll uh, help. Un you can actually uh, unmute yourself, uh, unmute your microphones and ask your questions now. Uh, this is only for the participants on Zoom. Uh, you YouTube viewers will not be able to ask you questions, but you can type your questions. So anybody has a question? Uh, Bhatina is, is raising her hand. Bhatina, would you like to ask your question? Okay, so um, let me ask a question that, is, that was in the Q&A box in the meantime. Uh, Shashi Kant asks, is DBT planning to launch a lectureship program in addition to the JRF SRF schemes? Uh, not in the, uh, not very soon. We don't have any such lectureship program in place what exactly he you want to know about the lecture lectureship program i'm i couldn't get the question exactly what he wants to know okay uh, shashikant if you are able to unmute yourself you can ask that question okay in the absence of which okay so let me take the next question in the meantime Uh, Sendil Kumar asks, when will the 2019-20 BIT BITP training program be announced? Anil Anil Mehra, Anil Behra is asking this question. Uh, this, uh, whenever uh, we have these announcements, they will be on our website. Please uh, see the website uh, regularly. It will come there in maybe in a month's time. Okay. My advice would be uh, once in a while, please do go to the DBT website and uh, keep checking. Uh, there are not only this program, many other programs uh, will be always there. You need to uh, visit the uh, website regularly. Okay, so the next question is um, from Sendil Kumar. Does DBT provide startup funding? I, I think you have covered a bit of that, but you'd yeah, like Department to of Biotechnology. Uh, uh, does have this kind of program under BIRAC. As I did say, the BIRAC has a lot of activities. Please do visit the BIRAC website and then you'll get many other uh, information also regarding the startup grant. Okay, so one more question is, does DBT have any women scientist related schemes? Yes, Department of Biotechnology has a specific scheme for the women scientists that's called a DBT BioCare uh, scheme. It is for the women scientists, especially for those who had a career break and they want to come back to the mainstream of science. And this scheme is specifically for them, whether you have a permanent job or you are without a job, you are eligible to apply up to the age of 55 years. You can have more details on our website and very soon we will have a next call within a couple of months, it will be out. And uh, you can apply, you can go through our website and see the details about it. We ask for the letter of intent and the entire process will be available on the website, how we go about it. You uh, can certainly apply for this. 
thank you uh, thank you dr minakshi malini is asking are there any submission timelines for the r and d projects no normal competitive r and d projects can be submitted around the year we accept competitive r and d programs throughout the year but if it's a call for proposal they are uh, they are they have the timelines uh, and you have to follow those uh, you know deadlines but in case of competitive r and d we accept Uh, proposal throughout the year and you have to go through the e promise portal as i said you, everything has to be online you need to submit the proposal online we don't accept offline proposals now okay another question from uh, karb karvannan is asking if there are any schemes for post graduate project funding post graduate uh, project funding uh, as of now no but we are thinking of uh, launching some scheme in due course of time thank you uh, mahipal is asking if students can submit projects to dpt as of now we do not have any such scheme where students can submit a proposal okay um anonymous is asking when will dpt biocare program be announced uh most probably uh, in august we will be announcing this call for biocare okay um one more question is shalini vasanta wants to know whether post docs can also apply for this iyba award which what is the chance of getting it in comparison with faculty or scientists no, it's nothing like comparison with the faculty or the scientists uh, your cv your uh, has to be good and competitive you can apply for this iyba it is whether you are in a soft position or you have a permanent faculty position uh, that is not an issue issue is your uh, cv your resume has to be competitive enough to qualify to be selected we'll take one question from our youtube viewers uh, are there any trainer for training for trainers program in dbt as of now no okay um okay one more question uh are there any post uh, post doctoral fellowship schemes that run through this year department has a dbt research associateship program which is being implemented by indian institute of science bangalore we have this program in place okay one more question from madhuvanti is asking what is the function of finishing schools finishing school programs are like you know you are in a, you have done your masters and you need in a particular area and then you need to have a if you want to increase your skill development then you can go to a particular industry and then uh, you get a 6 months training in specialized training in that area okay uh i think we will uh, st stop the questions we're almost ending the near of the webinar uh we know all your questions and we will get back to you with your with all of your answers we all um we, we for all of those you those of you that have questions um so we would also like to take this opportunity to announce that this is the first just the first of the series of the department of please send your feedback to us and uh, we would like to always improve upon our uh, this was the first in the series and we in this we didn't talk much uh, in detail about each program in subsequent uh, seminar webinars we will talk about each program at length so that you have a, a feel of what is happening and what are the terms and conditions how to apply what are the deadlines all those things will go into the subsequent uh, se webinar series but today we just wanted to tell you what are the programs uh, we are supporting what are the fellowships we have and uh, we would need your constant feedback to improve upon these uh, uh, webinars and also maybe there are some schemes uh, we would like would like to improve upon and have some new schemes your uh, feedback will be of value to us uh yes uh, on the note of uh, getting receiving feedback as soon as this webinar gets over you will have a feedback form that will pop up on your screen you'll also receive a follow up email with a link to the feedback form so do uh, you know submit your questions and your recommendations and your ideas for future webinar topics through that form um i would like to also take the opportunity to announce the next webinar uh, uh from dbt this is going to be on empowering budding scientists which is going to focus on the fellowships and training opportunities for students this will be presented by dr shelja gupta and dr pamizai and this will be next month 
July 26th, uh, 2019 on Friday. Please mark your calendars and uh, you'll also find a link to register for this um, webinar that I'll share shortly in your chat box. Um, with that, I think we'll, we've come to the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope you found this useful. Once again, it, it's a series that just started. It's an initiative that's uh, started by um, in India BioStreams hosting the Department of Biotechnology. A lot is gonna come your way through the channel of webinars. Please stay tuned. So you'll 